people. But will I find faith? Are you with me? Will I find faith on the earth when I return? You understand that? Yeah. Are you with me right now? Yep. The character and the nature of God is so vast, so great, so powerful. He loves us. He died for us. He bore our sins in his body on that cross. By his wounds we are healed. That's what he's like. That's his nature. I was, I was in this church praying for a lady last week and the Holy Spirit showed me the reason why she wasn't well because she was unstable in her thinking. Unstable. So it brought unstableness to her walking. And I said to her, I give her a word of knowledge, she said, yes, you're right. I'm unstable. I think sometimes am I saved? Or am I not saved? Because she don't know who God really is. God is dependable. God is faithful. God is love. God honors his word above himself, says the word of God. Are you with me? I'm trying yeah. to go somewhere yeah. tonight. Don't look shocked at me. <laughs> really, I'm preached to three million people now. You just can't see them, all right? That's why I'm shouting, just joking. So James chapter 1, verses what, eight to eight, no, 5 to 8. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown around, tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and stable in all he does. Do you know why that person is unstable? Because they don't know what God is like. They don't know if they can trust God. They don't believe that he loves them. They don't believe that God is absolutely good all the time. They don't believe really that Jesus hears their prayers. So they doubt God. Will God answer me? Will God come through for me? Will he answer my prayers? Will he save my family? These doubts in our mind because we don't really, really know what he's really like. So there's an uncertainty what God's like. You see, Jesus is perfect theology. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And everyone who came to Jesus, Jesus healed, Jesus set free, Jesus delivered and turned their lives around when he spoke the word of God. So Jesus is perfect theology. It says in the Gospels that Jesus healed their sick. But that's really personal. Did you get that scripture so personal? He healed their sick. People brought their sick to Jesus and Jesus healed them. When he says this then, then he says that they begged him that their sick can touch the hem of his garments. And everyone who touched him were healed instantly by the power that flowed from his, what? Body. He just stood there and let handless touch him and walked away healed. It goes back to the point, I'm like a drug, drug addict in the pharmacy. I'm like a kid in the sweet shop when it comes to my people, my children, who are made in my image. Don't you realize that you are made in the very image of God and you have so much value to God? If you wasn't valuable, if you was not a VIP, why would Jesus die on the cross for you or die for me or die for your family? Why would he die for you if you're not valuable in his sight? So people doubt God because they're unstable. They're not sure, is God going to move? Why haven't God asked my prayers? Because the enemy is a thief and a liar. He distorts your mind and you live in a fallen world. So who are going to believe? See, Isaiah said this in Isaiah 53. Who has believed our message? Who has believed our report? Who has the arm of the Lord been revealed to? And he's talking about Jesus there, the suffering servant. Who has believed that Christ came down and died for you? 
be the place for you, for you and your family, that you might be set free Amen. and healed and totally delivered from the power of Satan. Who believes our message that God is absolutely good and God is absolutely trustworthy? Who believes that? I do. I do. 100%. You see, that's why people like him, not him, sorry, but Shambok. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shambok was there. Where's Shambok gone? He's in heaven now. That's why people like Shambok and the early revivalists, they took God at his word and they stayed there and they preached the word and they stuck at it because they believed who God said he was and he believed in God's nature that God is absolutely good God's got my back God is for me not against me that's why they saw breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough because they were convinced of God's love and they were filled with God's love too they begin to see the value. I spoke speaking to his tramp yesterday in Swansea. And I looked at him and I said to him, you've got so much value. And his heart begins to melt. His, his heart was, was melting. Only it happens to me. Anthony Hill, you, you, you stand the work. And his heart was melting when I said, you've got so much value. Don't you see that? You were made in the image of God. That's why Christ paid the price for you. He loves you. You've got value. Every one of us have got value to God. You might not think it, but you're valuable to him. Yes. Amen. Low self-esteem is of the enemy. Do yeah. that. Yeah. You've got gifts in you. You've got abilities in you that no one can do. There's anointing things upon you that I can't do. I won't want to do it anyway. It wouldn't suit my personality. But you couldn't do what I do because it wouldn't suit your personality. Are you with me? Yeah. Stupid, stupid, stupid thing. <laughs> Any new passion or brilliant? God bless you. A little bit more of this book. Excuse me, guys. This is not playing ball. But God wants to bring us as people to a place where we longer up and down in our belief. Up and down, up and down. But a place where we're just gliding, where we are on the solid rock Christ, where we know who God is, know his nature, knowing his character, knowing what his will is for our lives. Are you with me? That Christ is the sure foundation of everything we do. Last week, I was in the church, I saw this young man, leg grow, grow up like that. Straight. Out, he took the heel, told God. And the pastor said, the reason why that happened because the reason why that happened because us three men of God were together. I looked there and thought, no, it happened if, 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 if it wasn't there. But not just that, guys. Do you know why miracles happen? Not because of me or anybody. Do you know why it happens? Why your pinky was healed? Do you know why? Because Jesus paid the price 2,000 years ago at the cross. So if somebody gets healed, don't blame me. If somebody doesn't get healed, don't blame me. Don't pay me. Jesus paid the price for it 2,000 years ago. Are you with me? Yeah. Do you understand that? See, when people say, because we got together in unity, that's called pride. That is stench from hell and back. When every revival, hear me now, every revival, every miracle, every salvation, every time the Holy Ghost is being poured out, is because of the death and blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's because of him. Jesus said, I will pray to the Father to send the Holy Spirit and he will come. So the Holy Spirit comes and works miracles because Jesus prayed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's a work of grace. 
It's grace. It's mercy. It's love. It's his passion for us and his love for us. But heals and delivers us. Are you getting the message? Yeah. Good. Good night. You're half his death. Numbers 2319. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a human being that he should change his mind. Are you hearing this? Yeah. This is Old Testament. Not New Testament. He speaks and does he not act? Does he not promise? Then fulfill it. Do you hear that? So we can rest on God's word. So when God gives you a prophetic word, gives me a prophetic word, I can rest on that word. But Satan will say to you, did God really say that? Same old tricks, same old lies, same old crap. Do you know what the devil's like? He's like a pimped up tart with high heels. That's what he's like. He's a no one. He's the nobody. He's a deceiver, a liar. That's who he is. And he's destroying lives everywhere out there on the streets. And he has no authority. The word of God says this about Jesus. The Father has given me all authority in heaven and on earth. That means the devil got none. Amen? Yes. But the devil will try to convince you, like this flipping thing, the devil will try and convince you that he has authority. He will try to convince you over you. He has got none over you whatsoever. He will try to convince you he has rights into your life. He's got none whatsoever. See, the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sin. All sin. Praise be to God who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases on the inside and outside. All your sins are forgiven if you repent it. He cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Then you yield your life and your heart and mind to Jesus 150%. This is guys, dying or living, I'm the Lord's. I heard when a bonkey said that years ago, when he was alive in Birmingham. And I thought, flip the neck, you know? But I know what he means now. See, to be absent from the body is to be present with Jesus. So either way, it does not matter. It's fact. It's reality. So if I'm alive, I'm going to serve Jesus. If I die, I'm going to heaven. So win-win. Yeah. For dairy flame, yeah. <laughs> win win for you. Amen. Oh, it's true, is that we have nothing to lose mm. right now. You see, we need to get that kamikaze spirit in us. I know, kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need. <laughs> that you know, Jesus, I'm yours. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. I want to live for you and no one else. I want my life to make a difference in the world. I want to fulfill the purpose of God in my generation, God. I am completely yours. It's a laid down life to Jesus. That's what he's looking for. And he's picking up your cross daily. And hear me now, guys. Your cross is not disease. Your cross is not sickness. Your cross is not confusion. Your cross is not mistaken identity. Your cross is none of that crap because Jesus paid the price on the cross for you. That was his cross. He became disease. He became sickness. He became death for you. He became a curse for you. Are you with me? Your cross is to fulfill the purpose of God in your generation. That's your cross. Like my cross is to preach the gospel on the streets anywhere around the world. That's my cross to fulfill the purpose of God even when I don't feel like it. And so often I don't feel like it. But I do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Because he said go preach the gospel in all the world. Then the end will come. Amen? Mm. 
Psalm 1382. I want this part. For you have exalted your word above your name. God has exalted, honored his word above his name. That means you can truly stand on the word of God. That means if he said it, he will do it, he will fulfill it. Amen? Yeah. And so often you see, when God begins to flow and move, you get little pictures in your mind, and you all little words, and you just follow the trail he gives you. And in the end, you see a miracle at the end of it. You just go with it. Last week I said to the pastor, I wasn't preaching last week, they asked me to come out and pray with the preacher and, and, and you know, whatever. And I said to the pastor, his son came out, he had one leg short, and the other, I said, I thought frustrated mind, film this. I told the pastor, get your phone out and film it. So he pulls his phone out and films it. And I stand there, I say, Jesus, nothing going on. I'm thinking, oh, well, here goes again, isn't it? So I said to the, the preacher, hold his leg. The preacher had his leg, so I went behind him and said, in the name of Jesus, be healed straight now. And the leg popped out, the other one came. Hmm. But if I didn't say that, film it. Are you with me? Yeah. It's the flashes, it's those little pictures, of, it's the prophetic that begins to flow and the miracles begin to flow. That the guy on TV was speaking about. It's following God, it's taking risks, it's taking chances. One time in Africa, I remember I was in, in, in my room before the crusade and I saw people getting healed with glasses on. That's all. No blind eyes, just glasses. I saw glasses and weak eyes, people being healed. And so before I preached in this crusade, I, 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 I declared, those of you who can't see well, who've got glasses, come forward. I'm going to pray for you and Jesus is going to heal you. And, uh, you know, I, I've got a big crusade voice. I'm meant to preach crusades. I'm sorry, guys, if, if you hear drums have busted you this morning. Forgive me. Or tonight, forgive me. Forgive me. It's more the, um... And, uh, so I said, in the name, and about 30, 40 people came forward. I said, in, in the biggest crusade voice you could imagine, I'm not going to shout, but in the name of Jesus, eyes be healed. I said, who got healed? No one. Not one got healed. So did it another time. In the name of Jesus, eyes be healed. Not one got healed. Third time. Lucky, I thought, no. And they all sort of laugh at me. I thought, naughty kids, not getting you, get back to where you belong. And so I, I could have given up, couldn't I? When I preached the gospel, preached the word. And it's a miracle. People got saved that night because of what just happened. But it's the word of God, it's the word of God saves souls. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. <laughs> Amen? Miracles don't save nobody. Miracles are the dinner bell. Ring ding 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 ding, you know. Something's going on here. God is real. It's the word that saves. He honors your faith as well. Trust, it's his faith working in you. That's Mark, which he works in you. That's Mark, which translation, his faith works in you. See, God works in your call to will and purpose. It's the grace that you follow in his faith. And if he desires now to do it, you step up and do that. Just his faith working in you. If you don't leave that faith working in you, you don't, did you get that? It's not going to come to pass. It's his faith and grace. So I said to the Lord, Lord, you know, let's sing a song now. And after that, I'm going to pray for the sick. So I said to Jesus, you know, you're going to have to heal now, Lord. And so the second time came on, I prayed. The miracles broke out. <coughs> miracle after miracle after miracle. And we had, at the end of, of the weekend, we had a huge revival in that place. So even the, all the MPs came, be touched up by Jesus and blown, you know, blown, you know, touched and transformed by Jesus. And they said to me, you are like our, our, our like ancestors. You're not like the normal um, Church of England here. And you are like our ancestral spirits. I said, no, it's not our mate, it's Jesus. He's the miracle worker. You see, but we must realize miracles happen. You get to this point, 
Miracles happen, not because of you, not because of me. I know what I'm like. You don't know my struggles. I don't know your struggles. Miracles happen because of Jesus. Yeah. Let me give you seven keys. I might have said this before to you. But let me give you seven keys to living a successful Christian life. Do you want to hear this? Seven keys? Yes. Have yeah. you, yeah. you got pen and paper? Because if I say this to you right now, it is, I've given it to you. It's your responsibility. This is your responsibility. It's, 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 it, I, I wipe my hands clean. Now, this will transform your life if you know these seven keys. Key number one, write it down or remember it. Key number one is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Key number two, are you ready to write it down? It's Jesus. Key number three, ready? Jesus. Key number four, Jesus. Key number five, Jesus. Key number six, Jesus. Key number seven, Jesus. Jesus is everything. It's through him we receive life. He's our redemption. He's Ooh. our holiness. He's our sanctification. It's through him we receive the blessing of the Father. It's because of what he's done for us. Amen. It's Jesus. It's the key to everything. And the apostles preach Christ crucified, Christ resurrected. And you wonder why the church has gone so far away from miracles, signs, and wonders. Because they no longer preach Jesus, the center of everything. When the apostles in Acts, they said they were preaching Jesus and him crucified. And they were preaching the resurrected Christ. And miracles broke out everywhere because they were preaching Christ. When Paul wrote the letter to the Colossians, he never went there. But you know what he said? I, I see in the spirit how your faith in Christ is firm. How your faith in Christ is firm. Not faith in fasting, not faith in praying, not faith in works, but faith in Jesus. That's why Paul said to the church in Galatians, do you remember Galatians, the Judaism people, the, the guys who circumcised you to be part of the faith? And they went into the Apostle Paul to say he was preaching heresy. We went to see the, the apostles in, in, in Acts chapter 15 to, to, to tell them what he was doing. And it says this in, 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 in 3, I can't find this there somewhere, but I remember it instead. It's okay, it's all in my mind. In 3 Galatians, the apostle Paul said this, Did you receive the Holy Spirit to work miracles because you believed what you heard or because you obeyed the law. Why did you receive the Holy Ghost? He said, wasn't Jesus portrayed as crucified for you? Didn't I paint a clear picture of Jesus dying for you on the cross, bearing your shame, taking your curse? and your sin into his body. Didn't I paint the clear picture for you? So why did you receive the Holy Spirit? He said, was it because you obeyed the law? Or was it because through the revelation of faith of Christ, why did you receive the Holy Ghost to work miracles amongst you? And the answer is because you obeyed the law. No, of course no, not. No, it wasn't. No. Of course not. <laughs> Because you believe the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you realize, guys, the Western church have so screwed up the image of God, what God is like? You got people in China, women in China, getting saved. And three weeks later, they're planting hundreds of churches, moving in signs, wonders, and miracles. Because nobody told them they couldn't do it. And in the West... The church have said, women can't preach. <laughs> yeah. In the West. In the West. But thank God, no one told them that in China. They just caught on fire for Jesus and went preaching the gospel everywhere they went, raising the dead, healing the sick, curing the leper. 
signs, wonders, miracles. Who told you that God can't use you? Who told you that you are stupid? Who told you that you are thick? Who told you the Holy Ghost can't use you? Who told you you haven't got enough education for God to use you? Who told you that? It wasn't Jesus. It wasn't God. It was some junked up theologian who hadn't got a clue himself. the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He must get the church. To stop you from flowing in full. And that's why mm -hmm. most churches don't like me and I don't care. Don't care. Anymore. Do you know I'm so passionate? Because God loves us. Because this is the burning desire of Jesus to see his church set free so his church will know what God is like. Let me ask you a question. How are people going to be saved? How is your family going to be saved? When I go out, I see the hurt and the pain and the loss in people's lives. Who's God going to use? Who told you your life is worthless? Who told you you've got no value? Who told you God can't use you, that you're sick? Who told you that? A bumblebee should not fly. You know, the dimension of the body, the this big fat body with wings. Really, it should not fly, but the bumblebee flies. Why? It was designed to fly because God made it. And God made you. God fashioned you. Don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and God himself resides in you. The power of God is in you. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. And if his power lives in you, it will quicken you mortal bodies to life because of righteousness, because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And listen, you cannot break the covenant. You can't break it. Because the covenant wasn't made with you at the cross. The Listen now. The covenant was made between the Father and the Son. Are you with me? Jesus died for us on the cross. It was made between him and the Father. And through Jesus, you came into covenant. So you can't break it. You can't break it. Are you with me? You can walk away from it. Tell me, we can't break it up, hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Mm. That's why he said the covenant is a better covenant. The old covenant is obsolete because the old covenant did not work. Because our flesh, because it was made between man, God and man, on Mount Sinai, and man kept on breaking it. So God says it doesn't work. I'm going to make a better covenant with me and my son. You're going to come through the center of the covenant with the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Do you get that? Yes. Isn't that amazing? See, you haven't been taught that before, have you? No. Religion doesn't teach us, see? Because religion is scared, because religion thinks if we teach that, but people keep on sinning. No. If we, if we know that, you're not going to want to sin. Because grace empowers you not to sin. Do you understand that? Yes. Sin shall not be our master. Why? Because we are not under law, but under grace. So when you live in grace, you live free from sin. Because you open yourself up to the light of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the power of God. And it fills every part of you. So you walk free of every lie of Satan. The Apostle Paul said this in Colossians. He said, your minds have been darkened by, by, by the, the devil. Darkened by your evil behavior. He was far away. But now God has brought you to himself through his son. And God sees you in Christ spotless and blameless. And holy above reproach. No one can accuse you now. If you hold on to the truth. But that's just set you free. Amen. That's why. Jesus can take a child. There right now. And believes. And work miracles through them. 
Yes. That's why Jesus said, you know, you must come as children, are you with me? Because our adult thinking screws everything up. Because children just believe God. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Adapting that principle yeah. is so precious. Do you know, this is my transform. It's a reminder renewed. I was in Africa preaching in 2008 or 9. And I was preaching about Jesus. It's all Jesus. And, and, and they said to me, this, what you're preaching is opposite to what we've learned. You see, when it's, it's like this, when, when you got, get saved, you became a brand new creature, the Bible says. Let's go here for five. When you accepted Christ, all right, think of this now. By grace, it says, by faith. Whose faith? His faith, his grace. He died for you. And faith comes by hearing the word. So when you heard the word, his faith worked in you to respond to Jesus. Stay with me. Then he said this, once you believed, the day you believed, you were sealed with the promised Holy Ghost. Amen. Sealed with Holy Spirit straight away. In your spirit, man. It says this then in, in Corinthians, somewhere, fifth chapter on there. Two, I think it is. That we are one with the Lord's Spirit. One, entwined together. Yeah. Did I go? Together. It says you know the temples of the Holy Ghost where you've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus. In Ephesians 4 it says this, that your spirit man now when you believe is, is made in his image in true holiness and true righteousness. It says in John and in the epistles of John that as he is so are you in the world. That's in your spirit man. You get that right now? You're, you're trying yeah. to be in your spirit, you're a soul with a body. So your spirit now is alive in Christ. You look just like Jesus, full of power. One third of you is full of God's glory. It says you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in your spirit right now. Yes. God lives in you right now. He's given everything to you right now. He's right. Do you understand that? He's given himself to you. He hasn't left you as an orphan. You're not by yourself. He's invested all of himself in you right now. He's there right now with you. Power. But then the enemy would say, I'm preaching scripture right now. All Bible I'm preaching. Yeah. See, it's not true. Do you know why? Because if you and I get hold of this, he's tossed anyway. He's tossed. But we begin to walk in the reality of who you are in Christ and Christ in you. Miracles will pop everywhere. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. And it says this, and get back to our scripture. If any man or woman is in Christ, he's a brand new creature. That means species. Something that's never been seen before. Yep. Not new in time. It doesn't mean mm. it means species. God lives in his people. Praise God. See yeah. the love of God. Amen. The creator living in the created. Do you get that? Yeah. When it says this, okay, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old has gone. Gone. All yeah. the old is gone. Wiped away by the blood of Jesus. You're a brand new person now. <laughs> Behold, look, all things in you. You look, you study who you are in Christ. Look. Don't look at the old, look at the new. Look at Jesus. Are you with me? Yeah. Who you are in Christ. They're like this part, even better. He said, and all this is from God. We had nothing to do with it whatsoever. It's all from him. Yep. It happened instantly when you believed. Isn't that good news? Yep. You can reach your family, no sweat. Mm. The power of God lives inside you to reach your family. The anointing is in you to reach them. The enemy said you can't, he's a liar. You can reach him. Because the power of God resides in you. And you got authority to reach him. No one can pray for him like you pray for him. You got authority. Mm. You really have. But the enemy would lie to you. It's not true. But it is true. That's who God is. And that's why he's made you. It says in John, no, it's getting on, I'm not going to go there, it's getting to, it's getting, it's half past six already. 
every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of heavenly lights. Who does not change like shifting shadows? In whom there's no variation. So God does not change. In whom there's no variation. God is dependable. Are you with me? He's yeah. the same always. And John said this, God is light. In God there's no darkness at all. He's pure light. Pure goodness, pure love. He's your father. A good father now, by the way. Not a bad father. Mm -hmm. Amen? He's good. Mm -hmm. No strings attached. So that's what God's like. So you see, it's... I've said already. Let me read this to you. I'm going somewhere. I haven't gone where I want to get. I haven't gone where I want to get to tonight. I'm laying the foundation for something else. That means you'll have to come back then. No, it's fine. I finish it now. The important thing is to come. Yeah. For me and for God. Because you're saved. You're going to go to heaven. There's many out there's not going there. It says this, I, I love this, this, um, this old, old, old <coughs> hymn. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. and righteousness. Listen now, I dare not trust the sweetest frame. I don't trust anything else. My fasting, my praying, my reading. I don't trust how many hours I spend in time in prayer. I don't trust all of that. Because <laughs> that's pride. I pray this much so God's going to answer me. Why are you see That's what you want. You think you're good enough for God to answer you? Hear me now. You're worth it. You're valuable. God answers you because of Jesus. He paid the price. Stay with me. You're getting this tonight. Yeah. Then I'll trust the Swedish, but. I wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. I think an Australian friend will show up. <laughs> With the Australian accent. <laughs> Religion would see this. I've gone there. Let's, let's move on. Do you get that? Yes. Amen. Oh, that's too much again. I'm too busy with my face. <coughs> It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to read this to you. I say all that for one reason why. God wants to reach the nations. God wants to work in miracles through your life and through my life. If we don't know his character, if we don't know his nature, if we don't know what he's like, if your thinking of God is, is, is unstable thinking, you know, is he good, isn't he good, is God, does God love me one day, but next day God's hate me on my performance? If, if, if our, our, our concept of God is like that, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to be sure, you're not, not going to show foundation of what God's like. You're not going to step out and try anything for Jesus, are you? You're going to be locked up in a cage somewhere wondering if, if, if you step out, is God going to help me? Or is God going to give me the strength to do what I need to do? Are you with me? Because you're not going yeah. to trust him. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus, I remember, I, can't, right? I remember this a couple of years back. I was going through a, a difficult time. And I was thinking, I just can't allow me out. I'm just can't allow Don't drink now at all. But sometimes you turn to, turn, you turn, I even, even in the past turned to stuff for comfort, not even realizing it. So one kind of lag, I don't think much, I'm not a drinker. But it hit my head like a bing, I don't drink. You know, I don't drink nothing now. 
because I, I, I was getting a bit, bit dependent on it because of pain in my life. But even in, in that time, you see, you were, I was talking to the Holy Spirit, the Lord. And you, you showed me and said, see, then my son, Jesus, could walk through hell. He did walk. Do you know why? Because he knew his father. That's why he trusted himself to go to hell. That's why he trusted the Father and the Holy Spirit to rise him up on the third day. Are you with me? Because he knew his Father. There was total trust, total oneness between him and the Father. He could walk through a hell and know he'd come out the other side. In victory with the anointing of God all over him. The resurrection power. Because he knew his Father. Those who do good exploits, it says in Daniel, will, those who do good also will know their God. Those who know their God will do good exploits. Yeah. <laughs> I've got that sometimes. Yeah. And you know what? I remember when my dad was passing on a couple of years ago, 2017. And when, when a person leaves the earth, they're always going to leave their last words. They're going to say to you. His last words is, we love him, he loved us. That's the last words, most important words. But you know what Jesus said to the disciples when he was leaving the earth? Let me read them to you. He said this, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, in the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then you take it out of sight. The church is a mission field. The church is not some, you know, Welcome, warm my hands by the fire club. A social could meet week after week. You are an army barracks. You are an army station in this place. That's who you are. You are here on purpose. You are here by the commission of the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. Amen. Every Christian, you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes on you and you, 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 not just evangelists, you will be a witness, a witness to my resurrection and you will see miracles, signs and wonders following you. Do you get that? Yeah. God wants you. Do you know what? This is an enlisting time. He's calling you into the army of God to Amen. rise up to reach a world that's lost and going to hell to see the greatest revival that Wales have ever saw and you are being part of that and God is asking yeah. you will you Come stand on. up for Jesus will you say yes yes Amen. Amen. and go out and share the gospel will you do that. Or will you stay where you are and be miserable and bored and desperate and lonely being beat up by the devil? Or are you going to rise up and slam his head against a stone? What are you going to do? Are you going to become a Holy Ghost terrorist terrorizing the devil everywhere you go? Or are you going to leave the devil keep on terrorizing you? Are you with me? Yeah, I am. <laughs> this is the fact, right? This is the fact of a matter's this, right? Yeah. When you get your eyes off yourself and the eyes on Jesus and eyes on the people, then your problems become minute and your problems will disappear so because true. the enemy is going to so keep true. you down under his smelly armpit, you know, <laughs> believing his lies, believing his crap. And the more you look at yourself, the more you stay there. But the more you look to Jesus and begin to fulfill the purpose of God in your life, you will walk in freedom, healing, and liberty. What are you going to do? I hold no apologies tonight. 
I don't. I've come to a point in my life, particularly when you preach on the streets all the time, you know, you, you get bold all of a sudden. Things change all of a sudden. Because you know it's necessity. Playtime is over for the church in the <coughs> West. It's gone. Bye bye. Are you with me? Yeah. You see, <laughs> Reinhard Bonnke said this Jesus goes with goers, he don't go with sitters. That's not, not in my notes, just keep mm. in mind. But in, in John 20, 21, 22, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I send you. Do you understand that? Do you comprehend that? Do you realize that? The God is saying, as the Father sent Jesus, Jesus wants to send you. Jesus said, you will do greater works than me. Greater works. Jesus said, you will do, because I go to the Father. Do we understand that? God cannot lie. But Satan will say to you, don't believe him. Don't believe the word. It's not true, not for you. You're a nobody. God can't use you. God don't love you. I remember a time when I was, I, I was in a dream, in a dream, vision, sleeping. I saw a small demon was speaking in, in my right ear. And I, in, in this dream, in the dream now, I was falling off. And the demon was saying to you, you're hopeless, you're nobody. And as I began to repeat these words, I took on the image of the demon that was falling asleep. I was becoming what I was agreeing with, what were you saying? All of a sudden, the anointing woke me up in the dream, in the dream. <clears throat> and I rebuked it, it went. I saw the body of Christ.